Everybody out tonight to the uh, All Good City Council meeting that was originally scheduled for June the 16th. Uh, we're going to take up the business for it tonight. Uh, we'll start with roll call. Honorable Mayor Bilbrey. Present. Honorable Vice Mayor Dyer. Present. Honorable Councilwoman Norris. Present. Honorable Councilman Hurd. Present. Uh, our invocation will be led by uh, Bill Matheny. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we humbly bow just as humbly as we know how. We come thanking you, Lord, for the many blessings of another day of life. We thank you for your love towards us, for hearing and answering prayer. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for every good and perfect gift, because we realize, Lord, they come from you. We pray now, Lord, you look down and help us, O oh God, that we'd always remember the sick. Lord, you'd touch your body to heal and fit your will. Ask you to comfort them that's lost their loved ones. Ask you, Lord, to be with our nation, dear Heavenly Father, that it would turn back to you, dear Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord, you just bless this meeting here tonight, Lord. It be carried out according to your will. Watch over us and protect us. Keep us in the center of your will. When you get through us, Lord, in this walks of life, you give us all a home in heaven. Without the loss of any one will not fail to bow our heads. Give you the praise, the honor, and glory for everything. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mr. David Maynard, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, America, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First item on the agenda is consider approval of the agenda as presented. I think everybody's had a chance to look at that. Is there any discussion? So moved. Uh, motion and second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey? Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer? Yes. Honorable Norris? Yes. Honorable Hurd? Yes. Consider approval of minutes of the council meeting held on May the 9th, 2017. I think our minutes are in our packets. I think everybody's had a chance to look at that. Uh, is there any discussion? Motion. Motion now second. Motion second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey? Yes. <coughs> Vice Mayor Dyer? Yes. Honorable Norris? Yes. Honorable Hurd? Yes. Consider approval of minutes of special call meeting, a council meeting held on May the 11th, 2017. We also have the minutes attached. Uh, is there any discussion on that? I'll make a motion. Mo second. Motion second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey? Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer? Yes. Honorable Norris? Yes. Honorable Hurd? Yes. That completes our old business, brings us to our new business. Uh, consider approval to suspend the reading of ordinance 615-17, 616-17, 617-17, and 619-17. Uh, we will take each one of these matters individually here shortly uh, in discussion on the motion to suspend reading. Motion. motion. Second. Have a motion on floor, second, and roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey? Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer? Yes. Honorable Norris? Yes. Honorable Hurd? Yes. All right. Uh, the floor will now be open for second and final reading of Ordinance 615 17. Consider approval of second and final reading of Ordinance 615 17, <coughs> establishing procedures for public inspection of, access to, and duplication of public records pursuant to the Tennessee Public Records Act. Keith, would you like to speak to that? There were changes to state law this year that required um, each municipality and government to adopt the uh, new public records by July 1st, 2017. Uh, they put out a model policy. This is the model policy with our information filled in. Okay, any discussion? Okay. Motion to approve. Does anyone need to ask oh, for sorry. floor comment first? I'm sorry, it is open floor. Yeah. My mistake. Is there any discussion from the audience on this ordinance? Okay, we have a motion. Second. Motion second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey? Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer? Yes. Honorable Norris? Yes. Honorable Hurd? Yes. Consider uh, approval or appointment to, of Bill Benson to the BZA for term ending October 2019. Um, any discussion on that? I nominated Bill Benson. 
uh, because Bill Benson has uh, served on the city of Cookville uh, BZA board. He's been brought up here several times. Um, I think he's very qualified to hold that position. Um, is there any other discussion? Okay. Make a motion to appoint Bill Benson to the BZA. Second. Motion second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey? Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer? No. Honorable Norris? No. Honorable Hurd? Yes. Okay. Motion fails. Uh, consider approval uh, to set employees' insurance with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. Okay. Keith, you'd like to speak to that? There was a miscommunication when we had spoken about these plans previously. Um, there have been a lot of group product changes this year. Uh, when we adopted the Silver 25 plan, we were under the impression that of the $2,700 deductible, $2,300 of that would be HRA after the employee paid $400, and that's not the case. Uh, if the employee pays first, the employee will be out of pocket $2,700. And then it, um, when Blue Cross Blue Shield kicks in at 80%, the HRA would employ the employees 20% up to the maximum of $5,000. Uh, so the difference is there is the employee's going to be out instead of the $400, $2,700. Um, and again, that was a miscommunication that we've had to work through. Uh, and here's a list of product changes brought to us by our agent, just showing you how many different changes there were in the plans this year. Uh, Matt or Matt, would either one of you like to speak, or do you all have questions for them? Mayor and Council, I appreciate you guys letting us come back. Um, as last time I stood up here before you guys, we thought we had identified a plan that would save the city money, even lower the deductible a little bit for the employee. And that plan exists, but the way you administer the deductible underneath is so regulated now they won't let you decide where you want to set the deductible for the employees they say either the plan has to pay this amount first or the employee has to pay this amount first so we used to be able to just say okay we have a two thousand deductible employee pay 500 see pay 1500 they don't let you do that stuff anymore so and we stood up before you we thought we'd identified that we'll set this deductible up to where it works great everybody kind of wins well when we got in, information back from Blue Cross and sat down with employees and started looking through their information it was like this is a $2,700 deductible first dollar to the employee not the city so went back thought well let's hold on here let's go back to the drawing board so we called Blue Cross and said, hey this is how we thought we set it up they said you can't set it up that way is now where you have to set it up that either the employee pays that all amount or the, uh, the plan city pays all of that amount so we thought well, we better look at other options too. So we have uh, identified, because that was gonna put a big burden on the employee, I mean a big burden, uh, and we realized that. That's going from 500 to 20, 2,700 is just a big jump. So we went back to the drawing board, and we, we kinda came back with two plans that we think um, that look pretty good, and I think uh, city manager handed that, those two options yeah. out. The, the blue form is, is the new numbers I put together for you, and, and this is what we originally thought. Uh, the major difference is in the major difference here is in the silver 25 and silver 48. Originally, we thought the HRA would kick in after the employee had paid the difference in the deductible, but it doesn't do that. So, noticing on the blue on the silver 25 and silver 48. Uh, the silver 25 the employee has to pay the first twenty seven hundred dollars if they pay first um, the silver 48 the employee would have to pay the first five thousand dollars first um, again the silver 25 and silver 32 plan are still going to save the city nearly ninety thousand dollars in premium uh, we just have to decide uh, which plan we want to go with uh, and how you want to set that hra up on the silver 25 the hra can pay first and pay $2,300 and then it's maxed out and the employee would pay the next $400. After that, the employee would be paying 20% of all medical bills, Blue Cross Blue Shield would pay the others 
up to $5,000, which would be the maximum out of pocket, which means the employee would eventually be out of pocket $2,700. It's just not gonna be up front. It's gonna be in increments of 20%. Uh, the other option would be the silver 32, which is $3,600 deductible, 3,600 max. The employee's out of pocket 1,800. The HRA will pay 1,800. The difference here is since the deductible and the max are equal, you can actually split to where the employee pays half and the HRA pays half. So they go up incrementally until the $3,600 is met. So what would happen there is the employee would pay half of a medical bill, the HRA would pay the other half. Uh, or you can have HRA pay the first 1,800, employee pay the second 18, or employee pay the first 18, HRA the second 18. Um, in our opinion, one of the two options that, that fit best was either the silver 32 with a 50-50. So an employee pays half, HRA pays half, or the silver 25 with the HRA paying first. Uh, and again, the savings to the city aren't gonna change. You're just changing how the plan is, is structured. Right, the internal workings of it. The, the plan still works the same. The annual amount is still the same to the city. It's just how you set the deductible up underneath it is what they really mandated and, and <coughs> I'm pretty strict about it. So, so the Silver 25 has got a deductible and out of pocket maximum amount of 2300 or 2700, correct? 2700 deductible. And then out of pocket for the employees maximum amount is 2700. It's, it's, yes. Okay. But if we go with the, the Silver 32, okay. that's 3600 right correct and then they're going to be paying max employee 1800 correct they're both technically first dollar benefits to the employee so if they if you go silver 32 it's a 50 50 they go have a procedure done go to the doctor it's 50 they pay 50 percent city pays 50 percent of whatever that is up until each pays out 1800 dollars. whereas a silver 25 is still a first dollar benefit for the employee meaning they go first several times or whatever they have done up to $2,300, the city's gonna pay it. And after that, of course, the employee picks up the next 400 and then from there on, they pick up 20% of each bill until, <coughs> until it reaches another 2,300. So. Thoughts? Well, given the two plans that are in front of us here, um, my opinion the silver 25 gives us the best option for the employee and that's uh, definitely uh, what this is about the four hundred dollars up front uh, is something I think our employees could handle a little bit better on the front end and then the 20 percent thereafter until they reach the twenty seven hundred dollar threshold uh, I, I just would hate for any one single person or somebody with a family plan to get hit with that much money at one time. That's, that's, that's a lot of out-of-pocket expense at one time. So mm -hmm. that's where I'm at on the Silver 25. Okay. So we'll make a motion or any more discussion or... I'll make a motion that we accept the Silver 25 plan uh, as presented by Swallows Newman Insurance. So You're specifying with the HRA paying first? With the HRA paying first, yes. And that's doable, right? Yes, sir. That's doable. Okay. We've made sure of that. How, how much of it? There's not going to be any time lapse for their insurance now. We can roll on. It can, it can be July 1. Yes, Perfect. Sir. Okay. Second. Motion second on floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey? Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer? Yes. Honorable Norris? Yes. Honorable Hurd? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Consider approval of uh, first reading of ordinance 616-17, adopting the annual budget and tax rate for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2017, ending July or June the 30th, 2018. Keith, would you like to speak to that? <clears throat> the total revenues proposed for 1718 are $3,359,667. Total appropriations are $3,793,152.
proposed capital projects are the fire hall expansion. There'll be some TDOT Burton Branch road project engineering fees that will be reimbursed by the state. Uh, all good beautification that you all agreed to put $100,000 into to work on some things to improve uh, all good. Uh, the police camera update, uh, the snow plow, sidewalk improvements, commercial sanitation truck, uh, street paving for Main Street, uh, the water sewer expansion project, a line inspection camera for the sewer system, and meter reading handhelds. And the tax rate. Is uh, what's left in here remaining at 0.5123, uh, which you all, of course, can change back uh, if you wish to do so, uh, as we discussed earlier. All right, discussion. The tax rate. Oh, I'm sorry. No, sounds like we've got a lot of capital projects going on. We do. A lot of good things. No, we sure do. And uh, that brings back up the tax rate again. Uh, we left it the same, and in essence, that raised taxes last year. Uh, I think we need to consider dropping that back. I even got a letter from um, uh, Steve Pierce's office informing us of that, that fact that when we left it the same, in essence, you pay that you're going to pay, be paying the increase. Um, the, uh, I tried to say that last year, and the paper painted me as I was confused. I wasn't confused. I knew exactly what I was talking about. Leaving it where we are now, we're continuing another year of that increase in tax. I think we need to consider dropping that back to the point for whatever it was. That's what I was trying to look. It's either point four nine six six or point four nine seven seven. Okay. We can get it and go reset it. It's okay. Tax rate. All right. Discussion. Keith, what would be the difference if you did the point four nine as opposed to the point? I didn't adjust revenue to account for that um, tax rate being at 5.5123. Mm -hmm. um, so if you set it back to the certified tax rate, um, our revenues are, are going to absorb it because I didn't, I didn't raise them any to, to show the difference. So I left it assuming uh, just in case something was to come up that you all wanted to leave it at the certified tax rate that you could do that if you wish to do so. Assuming that um, the certified tax rate is, is equal to the previous year's taxes, um, we should still bring in just a little over $350,000 in real estate tax. So you've, again, you've factored that into this year. It right? was already factored in in case you all decided to go back to that certified tax rate that it wouldn't affect the overall budget. Mm -hmm. the, the numbers would stand pretty much as they are even if you changed it. Well, I'll make a motion that we adopt this annual budget with the tax rate of, uh, the adjusted tax rate uh, from uh, at 0.49, correct, Keith? Yes, it's 0.4966 or 0.4977. I can look it up. That's fine. We can adopt it with the certified tax rate. But that certified tax rate, I'll make that motion that we adopt this agenda with that. I'll second. Motion and second on the floor, roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey? Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer? Yes. Honorable Norris? Yes. Honorable Heard? Yes. Consider approval of first reading of Ordinance 617-17 to amend the fee schedule contained within the All Good Zoning Ordinance. Keith, would you like to speak to that? This came from the Planning Commission with a positive recommendation. Uh, went through several meetings. The current rate is $15 to do any of the items pretty much listed on here. Uh, the new fees would be a uh, special exception request would be $50. Uh, administrative review request would be $50. Rezoning requests would be $200. Zoning text amendment request would be $200. Variance requests would be $200. And a site plan review would be $200. Those are all items that typically come before the Planning Commission. Uh, I do believe these prices were set to match the rates for the City of Cool. 
did these figures come from per Kevin Rush? I mean, did he supply those figures? He did, and they went through the Planning Commission right. this last session. And they were approved by the Planning Commission, so. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey. Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer. Yes. Honorable Norris. Yes. Honorable Hurd. Yes. Consider approval of first reading of Ordinance 618-17, setting new commercial sanitation fees. Keith. We had spoken several months ago during the budgeting process that the commercial truck service was not paying for itself. Uh, the last time we checked, it was roughly uh, $4,000 in the hole for the year. Uh, the present rate for a pickup for a dumpster is $12. This new ordinance would make the 2017 July 1st rate $15 per pickup. Dumpster rentals will go from $40 to $50 a month. A dumpster purchase will go from cost, which is what we charge the customer now if they buy one, uh, to cost plus 10% to help offset the administrative fees and delivery fees. Uh, lid replacements that we do, we charge $25 per lid to repair damaged lids, and this would change the fee to $35 per lid. Discussion? Well, I know Keith had been talking about this for a while, but uh, we were just barely breaking even, if breaking even on this. And we've still got uh, the issue of trying to set aside money for when we do have to replace like trucks, which we're having to buy this year and things like that. So uh, I'll move approval. I'll second. Uh, motion and second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey. Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer. Yes. Honorable Norris. Yes. Honorable Hurd. Yes. Consider approval of first reading of ordinance 619-17 authorization appropriations for the fi financial aid to public service nonprofit charitable organizations for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018. Keith. The appropriations you all have said are 14,500 to be appropriated to the Putnam County Library uh, located here at the All Good Branch. So all this money comes back to the All Good Branch of that library. $4,699 appropriated to Upper Cumberland Human Resource Agencies to be used exclusively for the Meals on Wheels program. Uh, $750 to the Upper Cumberland Human Resource Agency to be used exclusively for the Court Appointed Special Advocates Program. $1,300 to be appropriated to Mended Hearts to promote general welfare of the citizens of the city. $5,000 to uh, Tennessee Vocational Rehabilitation Center, Department of Human Services to promote training of the handicapped for employment. $5,000 to be appropriated to the Putnam County Animal Shelter to promote the general welfare of the citizens of the city. $1,500 to the Putnam County Imagination, Larry, Imagination Library Program to promote the general welfare of the citizens of the city, and $8,000 to be appropriated to Tennessee Central Heritage Rail Trail. Discussion. Motion. Second. Motion second on the floor. Roll call vote. Mayor Bilbrey. Yes. Vice Mayor Dyer. Yes. Honorable Norris. Yes. Honorable Hurd. Yes. Brings us to our city administrator's report. Budget comparative for the month is 91.67%. General fund revenues are at 78.42%. It's $2,859,242.98. General fund expense is at 57.33%. That's $2,192,290.89. Water sewer revenues are at 95.2%. That's $1,493,429.51. Water sewer expense, 85.41%. That's $1,348,472. Total account balances are $8,784,585.63. Uh, we've been working with Burton Branch Project with TDOT. Uh, there's going to be some road closure for a few weeks while they work on the end near IWC, and we're working out the details of that to ensure truck traffic gets to IWC and doesn't end up on our streets here in town. Uh, the sidewalks around 4th Avenue are well underway and uh, on schedule will be completed. We're working on the tax freeze presentation uh, for you all. It's set for July's council meeting uh, before the council meeting at 5 o'clock. That'll be from the state comptroller's office. 
The Planning Commission had also recommended a three-way stop sign at 2nd Avenue North and Cedar Avenue. Um, as you come over the hill there, they had made that recommendation. I have contacted TDOT. Uh, TDOT says as long as it doesn't connect to a state route, that, uh, that is up to us, but we must follow MUTCD standard. Uh, MUTCD standard does suggest that before you change any intersection like that, that you do an engineering study or an engineering judgment to ensure that we're protected uh, when we do that. So, department head. Okay. That brings us to the hearing of the citizens and or delegations. If you'd like to speak, please approach the podium and direct comments directly to the chair. Yes, it is. Yeah, come on up. Okay. Uh, I'm going to address the stop sign. Okay, come, come on, come, come on up here. And that is a dumb idea. <laughs> okay. Flat out dumb. Because if you come down off over that hill, they're, you're going to get rear-ended. That's all they are to it. And I live, you know, this, put it up at High Street, you know, for, make four way stop up there, but not at the not under that hill. Yeah. If I don't know, Carolyn, you've been down through that. Come down through there and look and see okay. what I'm saying. But that okay. is ridiculous. Do we have a citizen that requested that to be done or who who and I don't we don't even know a name, just I mean, was it a citizen? It, it was brought up by a member of the planning commission. Oh, okay. All righty. So did you want to speak? Yeah. Okay. So that came. Okay. So that okay. that came from the planning commission. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Any others like to speak on that same matter? Well, let's, Victor, is that feasible to put it there at Cedar? No way. Probably a different location. Gavin, okay. what about it? What's your opinion on it? So with the degree of steepness of the hill and the limited sight distance that you were talking about, it would probably be best to stay away from that. Look at a look at a different location on second for a... Go up to High Street. Okay. If you want, if you want to put a stop sign somewhere, that's right up on top. And then you're still probably going to get rear-ended. What was the reason for speed? Is that what the reason was, did they say? I believe it was speed and just safety issues with kids at the hill. And We'll, we'll, we'll look into that, okay? How about that? All righty. All right. Ms. Spielberg. Are you saying that's not a suggestion? That's, that's just what you should be going, right? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Mine doesn't have anything to do with that. It has something to do with the city council. Okay. Um, I believe, and anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there was a piece come out in the paper that asked for people to call in and say if they wanted to be on the city council or be considered, or someone could nominate them. Well, it was my understanding that my husband, Bill Bilbury, was nominated for that position because Mr. Uh, Morrison. Mr. Morrison, Morrison 
call Bill and ask him if, told him that someone had nominated him and asked him would he consider serving if he was chose. He said yes, he would. If somebody nominated him, obviously they thought he could do the job. Then, if I'm not mistaken, later in the newspaper, it came out listing the people who had either been nominated or who had requested to be considered for the city council. Then, Mr. Bilbrey, if I'm not mistaken, you called my husband on Saturday, Jan uh, June the 3rd, and you asked him, did he call and nominate himself? Mm -hmm. He told you no. Wrong. That it was incorrect. Okay. And you, there's some other incorrects I'm going to correct you on once you're done, but go ahead. Well, maybe you should correct me as I go. Well, okay. I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, that's okay. I've got all the The piece did world. not say you could nominate anybody else. Really? Yeah, Cause really, because it's, it it's on Facebook and it's on our, our website. It does not. It said if you wanted to apply, you had to come by City Hall. You had it's to contact Keith. That's the flyer that was put out on our Facebook page. Now, that may be a typo in the newspaper. Here is some more information that was that I received. That one of the that there was two people that met the deadline. Those two people were, and the deadline was the 23rd. Those two people were Bobby Randolph and Gary Harris's Becky Becky something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were the two that met. What I asked your husband was. Well, no, let's go back to the Well, fact. now you told me to correct you. Now no, you no, wouldn't wear the okay, other. Let me correct you. Then, okay. Okay. Let's okay. go back to the point of being nominated and it being in by the 23rd. Mr. Morrison, when did you receive the call nominating my husband for that position? I believe it was on May the 22nd. Mm -hmm. I, I think believe. you're right. The nomination so, was what? Go ahead. So, according to that, it was done in a timely manner. So don't say that it didn't come in on time. Now, go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. on, on our Facebook page, it says people that are interested had to apply in person. Now. I, I'm not talking about no Facebook page. I'm talking about the paper. I'm well, talking about the Herald Citizen and the way it was printed in the Herald Citizen. Okay, well, here's the thing. Mr. Morrison, do you have a copy of that? I don't have it with me, but I can pull it. I think it needs to be pulled because be. I'm disagreeing strongly. Well, you can do that. You have that okay. option. But I have no control mm -hmm. over what the paper prints. They printed inconsistencies before. We do have control over what we put on our Facebook page. Do you have that Facebook page? Okay. I read it today on our Facebook page was what it was. Again, and, and I'm not interested in a Facebook page because Facebook is social media and I would think anything that needed to be done legally should be done either in a newspaper or something like that. I could be wrong, but that's my opinion. In just a second, you can. I'm gonna let you finish because several times you've interrupted me and I don't wanna okay. be rude and interrupt you. I'll let you continue okay. and then I'm gonna respond. Okay, well, just a minute here, I'm trying. I don't have my glasses on so I can't see what okay. it says. Uh, Okay, so let me continue. So, uh, supposedly, then Bill was nominated by someone. It, the call came in according to Mr. Morrison on the 22nd, which means he would have been, had received that nomination in a timely manner, okay? Then you called, uh, oh, and it was printed in the paper, it was even printed in the paper that Bill, and was no relation to you, had been, he was one of the people in the running, I guess, for that city council spot. Anyways, uh, then you called on June the 3rd, informed Bill that because he had not nominated himself, that he was not eligible and that he would not be considered for that position. Yes, that's exactly what he said, and I can call him and have him come well, and verify the statement. That would have been a good thing to do before that instead of you trying to fight his battles. Now, well, another know, thing. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm speaking now. I gave you a minute. I'm going to speak, okay? 
when when Bill, if Bill wanted to apply for a position, uh, run for this position that's open, you can't nominate him. He has to go to the election commission. He has to pick up his He's papers and he has staff. to apply. I'm not talking about that. That has nothing to do with that here. Several citizens brought it to my attention that there was so, and it was led out by a city employee downstairs that there were two people that met the deadline. Now, maybe you should have had two-way calling. You could have heard what, what I said to Bill. I asked him I two there. important was... questions, two important questions. Uh -huh. One was, Bill, did you apply for the position? He said, no. Keith Morrison called me and he contacted me and told me that somebody nominated me. I said, that's not the way that's set up. They're supposed to contact him. Those people are. I said, did, you, did he call you before the deadline of the 23rd? And his answers was no and no. No, I didn't apply and no, I didn't meet the 23rd deadline. That was the questions that were asked. Because now I did tell, I didn't, don't interrupt me. Don't interrupt, I'll give you a chance. Just give me a minute, okay? Give me a minute, and, I, and, and then that's what I ask him. Okay, this is what the city put out, and it's on the city seal, which tells you that it is, it, the paper does not have the city seal on it, and it says nothing about nomination on it here. Wait just a second, I've got something on my phone too. And there is a city seal on this one. If I could get my phone to work. I went back to something else. Okay. Yeah, I messed it up. It's, it plainly says right here. Yeah, I just, I just switched it to something. It plainly says right here. The city of Allgood is seeking nominations for the vacancy of council member with a term ending September 2020. Nominations will be accepted by email, and it gives the email address, fax, or at City Hall by calling Keith Morrison, City Administrator, and it lists the number. Any person wishing to be considered must meet the qualifications outlined in the charter as shown below. Please give your name, address, and contact information to be considered for this vacancy. The deadline for submittal of a nomination is May 23rd at 4 p.m. After all submittals have been received, a public forum will be held with the city council asking questions and talking to the candidates. It does not say not one thing, it does not say not one thing in there about you have to call and nominate yourself. Back, it says nominations will it, it be does. accepted. Back, back up, back up. And, and right where it says give something, whatever that word is, name, address, and phone number. What is that, what's that word there? You it just says, read it. Please give your name. Your, your, your name. that is your name, not somebody else's. That's not, that is your name, meaning you are applying for the position. It that doesn't say give states, somebody else's name. It plainly states that nominations will be accepted. It does not say you have to call and nominate yourself. If there are people in this town that think that he can do the job, are you telling me that you are so afraid of my husband being on this council member that you can't handle him being placed there? That, that is not a problem here. That's the, exactly the, the, what it the, sounds the, like to me. The point is, is that it was done right. That's no, the only thing. it was thing. done right. Well, that's, that's to be and determined. And you just do not want him on there, Scott. I don't care who gets on the position as long as they, they do it, but it has to be nominated by themselves. It, it does says, not say you have to nominate well, yourself. Does anybody else see this? Not like, not like me. It was your name. Matter of fact, right there sits one of the ones that's applied. Mr. Randolph, would you like to speak? Come on up. Did you take it? Your, it says your name. It says nominations. It does not indicate up there that 
Bill had to do that himself. Yeah. I guess so we just I disagree. I think that you are, are I, that, is, that is not right, Scott, and you know it. And you know as well as I do that Bill would be an excellent city council member. Several of those folks on there would be excellent. I agree with you. I agree with you. But and you, I think Bill would be one. you told him that he would not even be considered. No, I didn't say. I said, no, that's I what you said told every. Him. Well, then you need to bring Bill, and I will we'll discuss it with Bill rather than you. Bill needs to fight this instead of you. Let me tell you, he's my husband, and I can fight for him anytime I get good and ready, and I choose to do it right here, right now. Okay, discussion is over with. It's over. Next. You're wrong. It's part of making mistakes. Hello, Ms. Bennett. I've made a request the last three meetings that I've been up here by the Chief of Police or the Acting Chief of Police to come and run traffic on Glen on Lake Road. And I asked him last week when, when we were here, and he said he didn't know. He didn't know whether they were doing it or they weren't doing it. But we've got so many speeders out there. I am scared to death my grandkids are going to get run over. And actually, Highway Patrol has chased people into my driveway. Yeah, speeders all the way into my driveway. We need help out there. And you can ask Miss Ruby, she lives right out the road from me. It's like a raceway. We need somebody to come out there and control that traffic. I mean, I'm talking, they're going 70 miles an hour up past our house. And it's dangerous to try to back out or get out or pull out, so please. <laughs> Captain, can you see that they get some extra enforcement on Quinlan Lake Road? Thank you, sir. Next. Um, just like to uh, the storms that came through, you know, on the 28th of uh, May. I uh, want to, as a citizen of Olga, I want to thank all the, uh, the uh, electric crews and the cleanup crews for the great job they did in uh, cleaning up and repairing the uh, electricity, you know, to everybody. Um, I think, though, uh, that storms like that, we, we really dodged a bullet in that damage could have been far worse around the city. Um, could the city council look into the feasibility of maybe implementing buried power lines uh, so that there wouldn't be so many, you know, and ice storms during the winter, too. You know, that's, that's a problem that we have that's common. Could, could the city council look into the feasibility of buried power lines? The power lines are owned by Upper Cumberland, and that we don't have any control over that. That would be something you'd have to address with them, as well as the phone and cable right. lines as well. Okay, well, still would like to thank everybody that did a good job of responding and cleaning up and repairing. I want to thank Victor for his crew, too. He sent a crew to Cookville when they needed yeah. some assistance, so thank you to your crew. Okay. Any more? All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn second.